Hello everyone, Crow here. Today we'll be analyzing a Pro-Am match between the Houston Outlaws and Redbird Esports. Houston this year is a team of absolute monsters with championship level players in every single role, and Redbird Esports is considered one of the best teams in North America after winning the most recent Contenders Championship. This team produced numerous American Overwatch League players, but today we'll be keeping an eye out for two key players on this roster. The first is Gig, an ex-Overwatch League main tank player with high proficiency on Reinhardt. The second is Vision, a well-rounded main DPS and ace of Redbird Esports. For the first round, we have Legion Night Market. Redbird is running a full dive with Sombra Tracer, and Houston is running a dive paired with Far Mercy. Houston's plan is to have Far Mercy and Tracer set up on each side of the point and look for an opening to dive in together. If Redbird was playing a hitscan or flex DPS instead of Sombra, in order to maximize the Far Mercy's value, Houston would have to engage with Wrecking Ball first, then Tracer and Far Mercy would follow up on the dive. But because Redbird chose to play Sombra, Wrecking Ball is at risk risk of getting hacked and punished if he engages first, so instead the ideal strategy would be for Far Mercy to pull the aggro first so that Wrecking Ball and Tracer have the opportunity to follow up for the cleanup. Meanwhile, Ana needs to play with the mindset that there will be no allies available to heal or peel for her while Far Mercy is rotating around, and needs to stay either on the high ground or while surviving through cover and a health pack. Here, Redbird needs to be careful about playing objective first. In this scenario, rushing onto the objective opens up the space for Ana to crawl down to the low ground for an angle, and forces the team to play reactively while Houston's Far Mercy, Ball, and Tracer are able to poke and engage for free. Because they chose to play point, Redbird's frontline gets continuously pushed back by the Far Mercy and gives Houston the initiative for free. When Far Mercy pokes down the enemies, Ball and Tracer swoop in for the cleanup, allowing Houston to take the first fight. Not again in the back window. Redbird in their sights. Oh, yes, the Redbird are there, but the Greenbird simply better. Grathen falls on down, and Renko's forced to flee away with the antinode of Shu nipping at his heels. Rather than heading to point, it would have been better if Redbird took control of the Mega first and looked for an opening to dive in with Winston, Lucio, and Kiriko, while Sombra and Tracer applies objective pressure while surviving with the various health packs surrounding the point. In the second fight, Houston starts as far away from the point as possible while Ana positions next to the mega health pack near the point. When the enemies plan on diving, Ana immediately falls back, buying enough time for the team to poke down the rest of the enemy team with Winston being the main punching bag. Targets. Gig's already super low, a well placed Susan's gonna be able to save him a nice! Happy's Tracer stays busy, creating a crossfire by poking the enemies down from their flank. Redbird having lower sustainability compared to Houston ends up spending too much time and resources on the Ana to no avail, which gives Houston the advantage the longer the fight drags on. Kind. And Happy's gonna be able to clean up the rest as well. Yeah, look at how much support Violet has been putting into the team. Not only is Shu able to really focus on <laughs> being able know. to get the antis down, but yeah, they don't know, like they, <laughs> they don't know. In the second fight, Shu walks across the open area, baiting the enemy dive while the rest of the team trades out. Especially after Gig is going to be able to get the first pick onto Shu, you might be able to see this justice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no way. That, I hope that was called, but if not, profoundly unlucky for Gig. As the percentage ticks up to the last fight territory, Redbird has no choice but to head straight to the point. They open up the fight with Kitsune Rush, but Houston counters with a minefield and Nano. Once you're forced to play objective against the pharmacy, there isn't much you can do as a response, and as a result, Houston takes round one. I mean, last, there's plenty of healing to be found from those split beams. Watch out for those mines on the field. They're going to make locomotion for the Tracer. Mighty unfortunate as Grafton managed to find... It's time for round two, and Houston starts off with some unusual pitch. Meanwhile, Redbird utilizes a standard Reinhardt rush comp. Happy takes an off angle on White while being escorted by the main to set up for the main team fight. Redbird chooses to avoid the Widow's angle by staying on the other side of the pillar, but this allows the rest of Houston to take their time setting up by completely surrounding the point. I thought this was for jokes, but based on how they're playing and positioning, maybe Houston actually planned this one out. With enemies surrounding all sides of the point, Redbird struggles to get sufficient cover from all angles to pick off from the mass. I need to have to, to redo the VAO for that one, but hey, look, Renko's gonna go ahead and throw down the amplification matrix, but Happy's in the back line right now. Oh my god! Fearless finally decides to switch off to Wrecking Ball after struggling against the Reinhardt Rush. Vision halts Houston entry with High Noon. 
really nice to try to get a quick aggressive pick here, but Vision's gonna go ahead and lock down a lot of these entry But he's forced to disengage as Moira ults to save the Mei and Widow takes the angle from White once again. Kiriko TPs to the Mei and Houston aggros the Redbird support line, creating an opening to punish the Reinhardt in the front line who has no heals to survive. A victim of the orb, I love it when Moira moves in and says her secret line, it's Morbin time! And now Happy once again round the back on the signature angle out of the ice block and into the fire, Happy. Might be chased out here, but no, the rest of the outlaws. Redbird approaches from white to avoid getting booped off, and both teams use Blizzard to start the team fight. Disrupt the back line. He's up. He's up. Redbird ends up committing both Lamp and B, leaving the team vulnerable against Kiriko coming in for the flank and Moira following in for the kills. Roll on around, drop his own mind. Happy doesn't know that the May is behind them. Green Square comes through. But it's for double orb kill, no way from Violet. All the orbs are popping off today. Happy swaps off the Widow and opts to play Farah in order to apply more direct pressure onto the Rush Cop. Quite smart. You can't block the incoming damage from a Coalescence, which Violet is going to be quickly working up towards. As With three ults in the bag, Redbird goes in confidently, but Gig whiffs the Shatter, expecting Ball to roll on the ground, and Cassidy gets poked out. Lamp gets exhausted, and even Amplification Matrix is committed to keep Redbird in the fight. But to make things worse, Redbird's May ult gets blocked by Pelican's Wall, and it's last fight territory from here. Blocks the incoming Blizzard with a wall. What a chad! The map editor as strong as ever here in Overwalker. Okay, the conflux of hits can aim more than enough to try and take out. Vision returns to the fight for a 4v5, but Houston quickly responds to his isolated positioning and immediately gets shut down by Mei and Kiriko. Rush comps tend to find more value playing objective thanks to its sustain, and as time goes on, Redbird begins taking the upper hand as a result. But as soon as Happy returns, he trades back with a surprise barrage. But now it's overtime, and both teams need to hold on tight to the point, stalling for their lives with the remaining members they have. Happy is eventually gonna fall. And now, overtime still in favor of the Houston Outlaws. Geek remains with healing at his back. A minefield could... But with Minefield on the point and Blizzard up next, Houston clutches out for the dub. Down those orbs of death. Not gonna be grinding out though, homing in in terms of this. Now Fearless with the slam, Gig falls down as well. Still, Redbird, they have enough here to try and clutch on up. Pelicans finally arrived with the Blizzard and that's gonna put this one to bed. But geez, that really was an interesting strat.